Max Miller from the Hockey News joins. We talk about some of the training camps. Plus, we play some games like Over Under and try to figure out which Sharks players are going to be some of their statistical leaders. So, all that and more on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at Inside the Rink, and I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Probably part of the Locked on Network, we cover your team every day. And if you want to be an everyday, all you got to do is just follow along wherever you get podcasts, or you can subscribe on YouTube as well, or just do both. Both is great. Um, so Max Miller from the Hockey News joins. Uh, we talk about kind of some of his observations from training camp. Uh, we talk about the chaos power play. And then I set some over-unders and let Max and I kind of try to figure out where we sit on some of these and then which Sharks are going to be some of the statistical leaders um, by the end of the season. So before we do all that, though, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you guys by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On NHL to get up to one hundred dollars match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. And now we are joined by Max Miller from the Hockey News. Max, buddy, how's it going? I'm good. How's it going, JD? uh hanging in there it's uh we were just chatting beforehand the du- or not the ducks the pens uh blackhawks games going on there's i noticed there's a lot of sharks links uh in that game with carlson and you're, how close the sharks were to bedard and ryan donato and sharks should have drafted kevin Kurchinski. there's just a lot of weird stuff in that game can't that, forget about matt nieto ryan donato like i know there's just a bunch there's of guys. so there's a, it's it's so many like just parallel universes of what could have been for the sharks but we're not here to talk about parallel universes uh, with sharks. We're here to talk about this year's sharks and you uh, good uh, boots on the ground type of guy. We're at a lot of the sharks training camp. So I uh, wanted to get you on to ask you some of the questions. And I think the first question I want to ask you is which player were you surprised most by training camp? Maybe like your expectations going into camp were a little bit lower or like they just kind of jumped out to you. So who is, who's the guy kind of surprised you the most in training camp? Um, I have two guys in mind when, when you ask those questions, first one is Capo Kakinen. and uh, you know, kind of assumed, okay, he's a goalie, you know, he's going to work his off season, but he looks completely different this season. Like we've seen a couple of games, obviously it's just preseason, but his demeanor, every way he goes about his business just seems way different. Um, and the other one to me, honestly, is, is Nico Sturm. I, I don't know if there's just another level. I'm not saying he's going to be amazing offensively, but he just looks like he's taken on a little bit more team responsibility. He looks like he's, kind of a guy that Quinn relies on to kind of show the rookies or show the young guys or just show the team that the effort level needs to be there. And he's a great skater and you can really see his effort. He just looks like another level of just surprising, you know, he just looks like he's taking on a different role. Yeah. I mean, I think Nico Sturm is the, especially with, uh, you know, there's potential a available depending on if Quinn wants to go to with four or if he just wants to have uh two, but I think Nico Sturm is well deserving of an A just because of, what we saw from him last year. And I just think he's that type of dude. Uh, but back to Capo and I think he is an interesting player because I think Ryan Miller is going to have such a huge impact on him and just what we see out of Capo Kakinen, right? And I think maybe the Sharks were trying to have Capo be a little bit too aggressive at times. I think Ryan Miller, whose style of play was more of a like hang back and let things come to me. I think that's going to work out for Capo Kakinen's advantage a lot this year. I, w- I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a bounce back uh, season from Capo. Yeah, for sure. You know, I don't know how much influence Ryan Miller's had on, on Kakinen right now. Um, you know, Nabokov hasn't had too much to do with Kakinen from what I understand, but he does have some, he works closely mm-hmm. with, with Thomas Spear. But uh, when he went back home to, uh, to Finland, he, he worked with his own personal goalie coach and that seems to kind of, put him in a good headspace, put him in a good you know, mind and physicality. And that's what David Gwynn says as well. He just looks like he kind of was able to reset. And I think there's, uh, he kind of just 
went back to what he knew made him successful. I do agree with you. I think there was a little bit trying too much to make him too aggressive, you know, and I think for bigger goalies, it's you need to be aggressive, but you can't be over aggressive because then you'll pull yourself out of position, overplay a puck and get hurt in the process. So I think he kind of subdued himself, looks a little calmer. Now we'll see what it looks like in the game. Uh, Let's see if he starts Thursday night or Saturday night. I think he gets one of the two and Blackwood gets the other. If I had to guess, I think Kakinen's going Thursday, but I don't know. But to me, he looks just like a different to be in a totally different headspace. Yeah, I, I think it's, that's what I've been saying too from the preseason games. He just looks cool, calm, and collected, and that's I think what that that's the best Capocacadin. So, uh, on the flip side, which player did you maybe expect a little bit more out of, or maybe underwhelmed you, or just you're kind of hoping to see a little bit more out of? See, that's a tough one. I mean, it's been hard. Guys have been competing in camp. I don't think we've seen enough of Mikhail Granlin. I mean, from what I've understand, Mikhail Granlin, we know what he is. I think they're trying to say that he's the, not not necessarily a special talent, but I think he's, you know, he's a great player. I'm like, it's Mikhail yeah. Granlin, an aging Mikhail Granlin. Let's hold our horses here, guys. Come on. <laughs> and I think maybe they're trying to boost trade value, but we haven't seen him enough to be like, you know, Mikhail Granlin. I think one of the guys that I've been underwhelmed with is Vlasic. Um, honestly, you know, I think I know he's a veteran. And I know he's going to play. But I don't think he's mailing it in. I I think he's a great voice in the room. He seems upbeat in the room, but on the ice, it just he just seems out of place Uh, to me. Mm. It just it just kind of seems like okay, like you're here. We know what you were. You're a great player, but your time is coming to an end here. And to me, like he just just, he looks a step slow. He's not physical. And you look at all the you know the fun prospects that we have. And I'm not saying that Vlasic shouldn't be the lineup for somebody like Shakir Mukhamadoulin. I think Shakir Mukhamadoulin going to the AHL is the right move. But Agreed. a guy yeah. like Ty Emerson and you, you've got Nikita Ohochuk, when he comes back, he's going to be on waivers. You know, you've got Henry Thrun who's in there, but then you've got Vlasic who's going to play a 17 minutes a night and just kind of clog it up. And don't get me wrong. He's going to have an A and he's going to, he's going to be leading the room. And I think he brings value to the team, but I just feel like on the ace, he's just, it, it's the continuing downtrend of an aging player. And I don't mean any slight to him. And, and it's just, to me, it screams like, okay, you know what? You're a great shark, but, time's ticking here yeah and there's i mean what there's not much you can do with them right he has zero right. trade value you would have to attach a massive asset to take and the sharks aren't in a position to be attaching major assets to get yeah. players off the roster uh and yeah it, it's just you're, you're kind of just running out the clock with plastic over the next three years that way he can give his money to eric uh to to william eckland here <laughs> that's that's my plan just give the plastic money to william eckland you'll be fine so you gotta hope eckland um, produces but no like like i said like it's not you know it's finishing yeah. that point i'm not worried you know i'm not trying to slight the guy he's had a great career but he you know he just looks a step slow he's never been that physical and you look at, you know, if anybody have watched Connor Bedard's game, he doesn't have any space. Vlasic doesn't take away space that well. It's it's tough. Yeah, no, it's it's this what happened. Father time remains undefeated. So, uh, all right. My my favorite thing so far coming out of training camp is the chaos approach five man power play. <laughs> uh, we've chatted about this offline, uh, what, what we would do, but. How long do you think Quinn sticks with it before he goes back to a more traditional with the defenseman running it? Or is it just because they literally have Henry Thrun and nobody else can run the power play right now? The latter. Um, <laughs> I Look, I Granlin that the point is okay. He's a good passer. He's somewhat responsible defensively. To me, when they played that unit in Utah, Hurdle looked better at the point passing wise. Now, I don't yeah. know, you know, they haven't worked on it too, too much. I mean, they worked on it a little bit today in camp, but I don't know. It kind of sounds like I'm a, I'm a Mikhail Granlin hater, but look, <laughs> he, he he's a great player. But I think, you know, when Couture comes back, I think Granlin gets bumped down to that next uh, power play unit and we'll see who jumps off it. And it could be Thomas Bordalo because I think Bordalo's at risk of if he doesn't produce here, when Couture comes back, I think he's the most likely to get sent down just because he's waiver exempt. Um, yep. And, and, you know, they signed Giovanni Smith to a two-year contract. They don't want to waive him one game into the season, if that. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I think they're going to run with it, like, the majority of the season. That or until Mukama Doolin comes up. And then I think he gets some run on the top PP unit. And I think Henry Thrun's going to play with the kids and and Zadina on the second unit. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, 
necessity you just literally have we, we we saw too much matt benny running the power play it's just <laughs> not a thing uh but i think when couture comes back uh, we we've chatted about that like but i think when couture goes back i think he's the perfect guy to kind of run it because i think he can kind of play defense in a pinch if you need it to and i think yeah. he's i we've seen him kind of run it or at least been high up before on on a normal power play so i think he is he's at least makes sense to me to be the guy uh and like i said if we're ca- worst case scenario i think he has enough defense acumen to where he can kind of at least slow down or stop whoever's on a breakaway doesn't have the speed uh but i think pos- positioning and such he'll be okay with that so yeah He's been, I mean, yeah, sorry to cut you out. I mean, he's been a, he's been a penalty killer. I mean, he's strong. He knows how to create turnovers and get the puck up quick. He's just a smart player. It just seems like the right move to put him on there. He makes a good first pass. He's a centerman. He needs to know the ice just like Granlin. I think that's just the right play. And he's one of, he's going to score 65 points this year. Like that's what Couture does. If, as if he can come back healthy ish. So, uh, yes. All right, guys, before we continue with our good friend, Max, uh, and we look at some over-unders I set, including Tomas Hurdle's points, uh, Slippery Pete's points, uh, and how many games Thomas Borlo is going to play this year in the NHL, I do need to take a quick break. And talk to you guys about our friends over at Sleeper. Um, NHL season is finally here. Sharks fans. Uh, and the Sharks are going to have a season we've been yearning for. Or maybe not. If you're into the tank, this could be the year for you. Uh, I absolutely love, love the NHL. I know you do. That's why you want me to tell you about the Sleeper app. Sleeper app is the official daily fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. It's my go-to for daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. With Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash on daily fantasy the NHL's never been more exciting with studs like you have McDavid, Ovechkin, Bedard, um, whoever you like to root for. Uh, they have great stats. Just pick your f- more or less on stats like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more. And you heard me, Sharks fans, 100 times payout on Super. So start paying attention and get your picks right, and you could win big. Use promo code locked on NHL and you get a hundred dollar match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details. And before we continue, do need to let you guys know about something that's very important to me. And that's better health. Um, if you're like me, and sometimes at night your brain just doesn't shut off, uh, you have trouble falling asleep, your your head, you know, you're just c- tough dealing with some of the, the thoughts that just feels too crammed. Um, that's where better health can come in. Um, having someone to talk to with therapy is a great way to learn what coping skills help to set boundaries, help empower you to be the best version of yourself. Um, it's just for people to help trying to live their best life. Uh, if you're thinking about starting uh, therapy, give better health a try. It's entirely online designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire and get matched with a licensed therapist. You can switch therapists with any time for no additional additional charge. Um, so if the therapist you're working with, if it doesn't seem like a fit, good fit, you can find another one. It's no cost to you. Uh, make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNHL today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash LockedOnNHL. All right, Max, let's get to some fun stuff. So uh, I wanted to kind of set some over-unders and see what you think uh, of me. these. And we'll we'll kind of go with these. So let's start with one Tomas Hurdle, who everyone feels like had a bit of a down season, even though he had one less point than the previous season, which everyone thought was a great season from Hurdle. Uh, but it, this feels like Hurdle's kind of come back into camp. He, he looks good uh, physically. I think he's got kind of a more, I don't want to say selfish, but I think he knows he needs to be kind of more of a producer, at least when it comes to goals. I think last year he probably gave you know kind of set up timo meyer a little bit and kind of was a little not as selfish enough as they should be but i set the over under 70 points what do you got i'm gonna take the under there unfortunately look i think the sharks are gonna have a very well spread offense i think the biggest thing for hurdle why it was considered a down season for him 
was the consistency. I don't think he was had a bad season per se, but he wasn't as consistent as Tomo Turtle usually is. And I think the point numbers dropped because the whole team wasn't as good. And Eric Carlson carried a lot of the offense. I think he'll, he'll I think he's going to score around 65 points again. Uh, if if healthy, of course, uh, you know, health withstanding. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think, you know, I, I don't think he touches the 70 point plateau just because I don't think the Sharks have a pure goal scorer ready right there for him to pot, you know, 35, 40 goals next to him. You know, Anthony Duclair could push 30 and I think he will touch 30, but I don't think he, you know, who knows how often he's playing with hurdle and how often they're going to get the puck to each other on the power play. So. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, I, I'm going to actually, I got 72 in my head for, for hurdle this year. I think, I think we see 35 goals from hurdle. I think we see a massive, uh, massive bounce back goal wise. Uh, but, and then the assist I think will come. Uh, I think, but I, I got, I think we're just going to see hurdle kind of get back to being Tomas hurdle who scores goals. Yeah. Uh, so even if, if the sharks, they're also probably going to be down in a lot of games uh, and they could be pushing for some, some kind of garbage time goals here, but that that's my, uh, I, I'm going to say over with 35 goals from hurdle. It's kind of going to be the, uh, uh, the driving enforcer. So everyone's favorite Swedish son, William Eklund uh, made the slippery team Pete. Very, <laughs> slippery Pete. Uh, I set the over under at 39 and a half points for slippery Pete in his full uh, NHL season. What do you got? I think he goes over. I think we're going to see anywhere from 42 to 48 go up, not goals. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Goals. That would be, that would be who's Connor Bernard. Problem Eklund. solved. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Problem solved. Timo Meyer, who? Um, yeah. So, no, I think he's going to get anywhere from 42 to 48 points. You know, I, I think people are, are, are expecting big things out of him, and I think we'll see a lot. You know, I think we'll see good potential, but I think he's going to take a second to get his footing. He's never really been able to get into a rhythm of playing in the NHL. Obviously, he just had his first camp. Who knows how he feels like with the shoulder surgery? I think I don't think it's affecting him, but I think he's still getting used to the comfortability, the physicality of the NHL. He got off to a slow start in training camp, and I think he was just kind of testing his shoulder. I think post All Star break, we should see a much more consistent William Eklund, maybe like a 0. 0.5, 0. 0.6 points per game type situation, and then he'll finish up around forty two to forty eight points. Yeah, I'm right there with you. I think uh, I right around that forty five point mark for me. Um, I yeah, and I think too with what you wrote about a nice uh, had a good article about him, about how his ability to kind of play in all situations, that's what's going to keep him around. You know, we're not, I don't think we're going to have to worry about William Eckling yo, yo in between the AHL no. and the no. NHL this year, because I think he's, he, he can power play penalty kill five on five. I think he's going to be able to, he's that year in the AHL as much as per, you know, personally, I wanted to see him in the NHL. It, it's in the long run. It's going to do him much, so much better just to be able to kind of rely on those other skills. So, uh, and yeah, and I think, you know, if he's playing with, I don't know how I feel about the Grandland uh, kind of line, but I think Eklund will kind of work up a little bit. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if we see him with like Duclair, uh, you know, once the line starts to shuffle a little bit, uh, a guy who can actually a little bit more scoring prowess, I think uh, could, could really have Eklund maybe even getting close to 50 if he can kind of yeah. get, get with a guy who can score. So. Yeah, I think maybe he could play with Couture when he comes back. I think they just want him to play with a responsible centerman right now. I think, you know, Eklund can sense, play yeah. the penalty kill, but I think a guy like, you know, I think when Couture comes back, he's going to be on the kill. We'll see what Duclair and Zadina do on the kill. But look, it's Eklund's not going back to the AHL unless it's for a conditioning stint off injury. Like, it's you, like he's been with the organization for long enough where, okay, yeah. put you in the NHL, you, you've paid your dues start developing yep. in the NHL. We're not going to, you know, it's the right time to put it. You'll he'll get first and second power play units. He's going to play late in game. If he's not on the top power play unit, he'll be the first man on the bench in an empty net situation. Yeah, no, Eklund, Eklund's ready to, to, to show why he was worth uh, pick number seven. So uh, Alexander Barabanov, who's uh, one of the most intriguing players to watch the season, just because of his contract situation. Yeah. Uh, I, I picked him as the breakout player for the Sharks uh, in my kind of season preview. Over under 17 goals for Barabanov. Uh, give me the over. I think he pots 19. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he pots 19 goals. I, it's going to be very, he's going to push 20. That's a very, very strong over under. Did you get that number for Vegas? I'm not sure. Uh, I, but that was all, all here, baby. All what do you know, head, so. JD? Um, uh, I so, know all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, uh, Quinn is very high on Barabanov. Barabanov has talked about how he wants to shoot the puck more. They want him to get to another level. And look, you mentioned it. It's a contract year. 
guys do better on contract years because they're playing for their livelihood. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know if he's going to get traded. I think he's a prime candidate to do so because it's two and a half cap hit. He's 29. He's shown that he can play it at high levels. He can be an offensive producer on the power play and he's responsible in his own end, despite the plus yep. minus. It's just kind of unfortunate how that worked out. Um, but look, I think he, I think he pushes 20 and I think he finishes with 19. Yeah, I, I'm, I think he, mm-hmm. I'm right there with you. I would I wouldn't be surprised too if points wise if he's close to 60. Yeah, uh, 65 is my range with him for points. Yeah, because I think the uh I think we know the assist numbers are gonna be there with him, his vision and his ability to pass. Uh, and especially if he's playing with with Duclair for uh but we both are very high on Duclair this season. Yeah, yep. I could I could see uh Barrett Van off pushing for 60. And I've said it. I think the Sharks should resign him because I think he's just good. So, oh, 100%. Uh, <laughs> I think they should bring him back too. I think he's been a great shark. He just had a baby here. Uh, you know, but it is a business and, and, and Quinn thinks the world of him, but it is a business. And, y- you know, they've, you're going to have Will Smith, Quentin Musty. Most likely, Smith will be in the NHL next season, if I had to guess. Um, Musty, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he goes to the NHL or AHL and then comes back up. So you, you got to make room for the young guys. You can't have a situation like Detroit, no offense to them, but like, you know, yeah, you're a playoff team. Are you, are you playing the kids? What's this, what's this Iser plan? Like, you know, you, you got to be able to mix and match. I think this is the right year to kind of test the waters with guys like Bortolo, Eklund and Thrun and the rest of the guys are kind of filled up, you know, Emerson's in there, but he's been around. He's paid his dues. It's time for him to get a chance, but I don't think it's time to like, let the kids play yet. You got to make room for that. So he might be one of those casualties. Yeah, I know. I just, I think though, I mean, it's tough for another day, but I think, I think Barabanov though, like, yes, he's maybe age. He's been a great shark. He's been a great shark. I just, I don't see his game just falling off. Like the way no. he, his style of play, I think he, and I think he could be one of those guys who can help elevate some of these young guys. So you're not asking right. too much of them for too long. And I'm not saying sign him to the eight by eight, but mm-hmm. I, a four year deal, if you gave him the Kevin LeBanc contract, I would be like, cool. I'm, I'm happy <laughs> and he's with that. Consistent so. with that. But here's the thing I'm just going to play devil's advocate quickly here. He's a perfect yeah. complimentary piece, which is what teams at trade deadlines are looking for. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you get if someone offers that first, that you got right. really you, long and hard. <laughs> yeah, that's a tough deal to turn down to continue to build your draft capital, which the Sharks need to continue to. But I, you know, he's been a terrific Shark, and and I know they think the world of him. Yep. All right. Uh, you mentioned Bordalo. Over under 25 NHL games this year. So we know he's going to start the season up here. Uh, basically, we, you and I are both on the same page here. I think he's here until Couture gets back, unless he blows the doors off. Yeah. Um, and then they'll, that'll be a decision that Mike Greer has to make. Um, but, I mean, at some point, you got to, like, see what you got in Bordelo, who's also entering a contract year as well. I know he's yeah. RFA, but you, you still got to see what the you contract. got in Bordelo. Uh 25 games over under. Give me the over. I think he plays 33 games this year. I think, you know, I think he's going to get 10 games to start the season. Even when Couture comes back, maybe we'll see. I'm not sure Mm -hmm. who they'd send down or who knows. Maybe somebody gets hurt. What's going on. But look, I I, trade deadline comes around like he's going in the lineup. Like like, he's in the lineup. If he's still in San Jose for some reason, you know, I think, you know, contract year RFA, maybe things are working out. Maybe he wants a fresh start. If he gets sent down again, who knows? I'm not saying he does. He seems very happy here, but I think he, if he's, you know, second half of the season, I think he's in every night. Makes sense. Yeah. I'm, I, I got the slight over. I got, I'll go 28 games. So, all right. All right, guys, before we continue with Max and we talk about some statistical leaders, including who we think is going to lead the Sharks in goals, who's going to lead the team in average time on ice. And Max has got a Max has got a good one there. Uh, Do need to take a quick break. And talk to you guys about our friends over at Jace Medical. Um, If you looking to. Protect your family. Uh, you don't want to get caught unprepared, um, especially in case of an emergency or just whatever happens in life. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Jace case provides five uh, life saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you a peace of mind so that you're not just hoping you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have the medication in hand. Uh, Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation, uh, licensed pharmacy, medication delivery, and ongoing consultation of care. So don't get caught unprepared. Get $20 off 
on these life-saving antibiotics today from Jace Medical by using my code locked on at checkout at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. This one, this one was actually set by our good friends over at FanDuel, so I didn't come up with this number. But the over-under 65.5 points uh, for the Sharks this year. Uh, put me down for the under. Uh, all aboard the tank. Boop, boop. <laughs> Give me the under at 64. <laughs> like, I think that that's like the most perfect number. They can go anywhere from 64 to 67 points. Like, it's so close. Don't bet over under on that line if you're using FanDuel. That is incredibly, and that's why Vegas wins all the money. Uh, it's That is an incredibly accurate line. Look, I it's that's so close. Like, it could go a point either way, and they could be sitting at 65 for all I know. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I think this, uh, I've for the good of the franchise. Boop, boop. Let's go on that. Yes. So bring Celebrini right. home. We got to find a hashtag. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know. Uh, smelling for, so I don't know. That seems yeah, a good one out there. But... One. See, it was good for Bedard. He's two syllables. Tank hard for Bedard. There's two syllables. You made it easy. Yeah. Uh, Celebrity, could you change your name to make it easier for us? <laughs> please. Um, please. So, all right, let's talk about some uh, potential leaders for the for the clubhouse. For And this one, I, you know, kind of think about, right, especially with Brent Burns, who's been when basically as soon as he got to San Jose, he was always one of the league leaders or the team leaders, if not the team leader in average time on ice. Eric Carlson last year led the team on ice because Eric Carlson was amazing last year. So. Who leads the team on average time on ice this year? We're going to have a brand new name. Yeah, this one, uh, when you when you sent me the questions, they, uh, it took some time to think about it, and I really don't know. I'm, and my head just kept going back to Logan Couture. I know he's injured, but like, mm. like, I think he plays 21 minutes a night. Like, I don't see any of the defensemen stuff on what Quinn talked about today is, you know, guys are going to play similar amounts of minutes and then if there's a line you know defensive line one that takes control then they're going to get deployed as that but i don't i don't see that happening and when i look at somebody like hurdle he's not going to play much penalty kill when i see a guy like Kachuri, he's going to play top power play he's going to play top minutes late in the game he's going to play top minutes during the game he's going to play power play he's going to play penalty like everything adds up like he's going to play every situation and he's going to be a trusted end like to me like it makes sense even if the leading time on ice is like 20 minutes 30 seconds 21 minutes like i think it's logan couture and it's unusual for it to be a forward but like with the team that they have like it's i don't know i just don't know and and my head just kept going to couture that makes a lot of it's a little bit out of left field but you the reasoning is very solid behind it uh I went with Mario Ferrara. That's my guy. Uh, I know he's not going to get any power play time and Mario Ferrara should not be touching the power play. No. But we've, I, you know, very well documented his uh, penalty kill usage, especially over the last couple of years, even with Brent Burns around and especially last year with Eric Carlson. I know they're going to be able to kind of divvy up that PK a little bit better with six among six defensemen instead of five defensemen. Uh, but I still think Mario Ferraro is just going to be that dude for the Sharks where they're just going to keep trotting him out there, even if they're overusing him as they have been. But I, I yeah, I will take Mario Ferraro as my uh, average time on ice. Uh, yeah, leader. he was he was kind of the guy I looked to, but I don't know. Something about Mario Ferraro this season, you know, great guy, and I think he's a terrific player, but something about it just screams to me that he's not going to have the same role he used to. I don't know if the sharks haven't soured on him, but I think they're kind of realizing they need to stop using him in certain situations because he just hasn't been as effective. Yeah, it makes sense. But I mean, coaches and habits, yeah. uh, et cetera, et cetera. And so. he's a veteran on the back end other than Vlasic. And we know Vlasic ain't leaving the time on ice. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, speak about the blue line, which blue liner leads uh, the team in points this year. Henry Thrun. That's it. Short Henry Thrun. He's going to get the power play time. No other defenseman is. He's offensive. He can pass. Jan Ruda is not going to do it. Ferraro is not going to do it. Benning's not going to do it. Kinejov's not. No, it's, it's Thrun. Like that, that. There's no other answer you can choose unless Mukha Madulin comes up and plays 75 games, which isn't happening. So it's Henry Thrun. <laughs> do all the combined, do all the defensemen hit 101 points combined? <laughs> no, I think 60, <laughs> maybe 70, maybe. Benning had 25 can... last year, right? He or... had 25 in like the first 42 games then you're like what yeah. like one point the second half of the year like benning's <laughs> a good puck moving defenseman and he makes a good breakout pass but i think ty emerson does it just the same and he could finish with the similar points as as uh benning did last season ty emerson can create rush up the ice thron can be involved in the offense emerson can't and the other ones can't either in my opinion 
no, uh, this this blue line is going to be something to watch this year. All right, which goalie starts more games, Capo Kakinen or Mackenzie Blackwood? I'm going to go Capo Kakinen, not based off ability, but based on availability. I don't know. The the injury bug has caught up to Blackwood. Look, he and I have gotten pretty close in the locker room. I'm not going to lie. You know, it's been fun to uh, talk to him. He has, drop. To, he has <laughs> told me, look, you know, I'm just doing my job. It, look, 24-year-old kid, first year covering the Sharks. I got to, you know, this is fun as heck. This is fun as heck covering the yep. Sharks in the locker room every day. But I will say this. Blackwood said this is the healthiest he's felt in two-plus years. He's got new skates, new pads. He and I have talked a lot about gear and his injury history, about what's going on with that. Um, and a lot of the injury white was with his heel. He had skates that kind of basically messed up his heel. He had to get scar mm-hmm. tissue cut off, which then affected his Achilles, and it rolled it. He basically would set up kind of like tilt it because he couldn't flex. It's a whole thing, and it's wild to hear about. He says his skates this year are, you know, they've adjusted the skates. He's gotten better. He's He really it, it, he seems to be in a great headspace, and I think especially at the start of training camp, he felt not shy, but he's a quiet guy, but – once you get to know him, he really he's really an interesting guy. And if he stays healthy, I think he starts more. But until I see something different, I'm going Capo Kakin. I'm going Capo Kakin as well. But the one caveat is Capo Kakin. But especially if he has a really nice start to the season, yep. if he's a potential going. trade, yeah. Uh, if somebody comes calling, looks looking for some uh, nice depth insurance as a goalie, especially if Capo Kakin has the, the bounce back that you and I think we, he could potentially have, yep. uh, then you have Mackenzie Blackwood. But I still think Capo Kakin just because again availability. And with Blackwood, you have to assume right. he's going to get hurt until he proves that he's not going to get hurt at this right. point. So and, I, right. and Capo Kakin has been very durable for the Sharks since he's been here. So uh, and, it's yeah, not, and the I Sharks think, have depth at goaltending. If Capo Kakinen gets moved, we'll see what happens. I think Mitu Makaniemi is ready to take on a little bit bigger of a role. I think given where they are with the contracts with Blackwood and Kakinen, look, uh, if Kakinen gets moved at the deadline, Makaniemi will have two-thirds of his season in the AHL to get his hip right, get his confidence back, and get moving. Yep. And then it's off to the races with Krona and Romanov and the, and the Barracuda. Oh, I think Krona is going to be awesome. That's my that's my I see. I'm, I think. I'm a higher on <laughs> Romanov, but I think both mm. goalies are terrific. Yeah, see, I think, uh, I don't know, it's just something about Corona. I think he's played a lot of big games. Uh, yeah. I think that's going to come through. So, all right. Uh, we've talked about the power play. Where does it finish in the NHL rankings this year? 24th. 24th. <laughs> I That's just off the top of my head. I was like, I can't pinpoint it. I don't think they're going to be the worst. They're not going to be the best. Give me 24. Yeah. It seems like a good number. They'll have some good streaks. You got five forwards and you got five capable forwards who can put the puck in the net. They'll go on some hot streaks but they're not going to be that great. <laughs> no. And I think having a actual real power play two unit that you can uh, yeah. trot out there instead of 100%. Uh, basically a third line uh, that the sharks were doing last year. I think that's going to, I think you're going to see a, a, an increase in power play or yeah. I think that power play is going to be better this year, even with the, you know, losing Carlson and losing Timo Meyer. Uh, I still think a deeper power play. And I think Quinn, like if you look at his time with the Rangers that year one to year two jump was a huge jump. I don't expect that. Uh, but I think, Quinn can actually put coach up the power play a little bit. Yeah, so. I agree. Look, Carlson only had 26 power play points last year. I think he's got a more well-rounded unit around him. Look, Carlson was making passes looking for one-timers. The Sharks didn't have them. So, yeah, makes sense. Uh, all right. Who leads the Sharks in? Uh, did I have goals or points uh, in goals this year? I want to say Anthony Duclair, just because I think he's the most established goal scorer. It could be Tomas Hurdle, uh, but I'm going to go with Duclair scoring 32 goals. I got hurdle at 35. I, uh, if I went with hurdle at over 70, I still, I gotta, I gotta keep the, yeah. So I think hurdle is a bounce back year and we can all, where everyone will be like, Oh, what this eight year contract? Like who cares? Yeah. Hurdles. Yeah. We'll see her, you know, hurdles, you know, he's been very good. And, and, and I just, I don't know if 35 goals is, is, is a lot. He's done it once in his, I mean, he's only scored 30 in his career twice. He did it once in 18, 19. He, he touched, 31 other times so i don't know if he can get past 35 again i just it's going to be hard with the team he has around him. that's my thought on it at least i think too much hurdles also i think too much oh, he's, on a mission. <laughs> i think he's awesome and i think he's on a mission but i don't know if he has the pieces around him to get him 35 goals let's say that uh have you met my good friend zadita no uh all right <laughs> last question x before we get you out of here sharks finish where in the nhl standings 31 uh, who's the, who is the worst team? You're going to hate me, but it's the Chicago Blackhawks. <sighs> they can't win it again. 
Uh, no, they're finishing last in the NHL. I didn't say they're winning the lotto. That's the Severini's got to come home. But look, I think Chicago, as as weird as it sounds, I think they have a much worse defense core and a even worse goaltending situation than the San Jose Sharks do. Look, I, Connor Bernard's great. Taylor Hall's great. But your second line is Jason Dickinson, Nick Felino, and Corey Perry. That's that's not good. That's not good. The Sharks have a deeper forward core. They have a more established defense core and defensive defensemen. And you've got two goalies who've shown success in the NHL, whereas Peter Morazic has not really been that successful, especially as of late, and has been injury prone. To me, I think the Chicago Blackhawks, everybody's, oh, Connor Bernard, this. Have you looked at the rest of the team? They don't got much when Ryan Donato's their front line left winger. Like, it's the hey, Chicago he's going Blackhawks. tonight. So. He, yeah, good for him. And I'm happy for him. He's my girlfriend's <laughs> favorite player. But to me, I just think the Sharks are a deeper team, and that gets them one spot away from last, which, generally speaking, in the course of history, look at the Ducks. Last place didn't get you the number one overall pick, Buffalo. because uh, The last time I had was Buffalo with Owen Power. Other than that, I can't remember the last time it happened. Yeah, I still think the Sharks are the worst team in the NHL. It's, it's going to be a battle for last. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's going to be rough yeah. going, but I think in the end, Chicago lo- loses it or wins it, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, no, that's that's very fair. I just again, uh, we it it makes too much sense. Be last, you get the first best odds. I I don't think we're not going to get the rigged. Uh, <laughs> I, I still say it's rigged. Uh, we're not going to get the rigged thing this rigged. year with with yeah with uh, Celebrity. Oh, is that Gary Bettman? No, uh, <laughs> short of my house, uh, shutting this all down. Uh, no, I, I think the celebrity thing makes too much sense. Uh, former junior shark, he go, he's going to, Bo- he's at Boston University. It it, makes, it's, it's the story it's so itself strange. writes itself. It's it's rigged for the sharks this year. The story writes itself. He went, he shark size yes. San Jose, Boston, coaches from yeah. Boston, players and prospects at B. He's supposed to be a shark. Read the tea leaves, people. It's it's gonna happen. It's what we deserve. This, we so. manifest this. We manifest it, and I, if anybody knows anything about the Locked On Sharks uh, history, I I have manifested some other stuff to happen. So uh, keep that an you eye guys on enjoy, it. You guys enjoy William Eklund. So uh, that's gonna uh, Max. You said it all. Uh, where can the people find you, buddy? Yeah, appreciate you having me on, JD. Anytime you need me, give me a call. You guys can see right down here the Twitter or X, sorry, X formerly Twitter at real underscore Max underscore Miller. Uh, since the last time I've been on here, I have added an Instagram. It's just THN Max Miller. And then you can find all the news and notes and articles. I've upped a lot of the content. We're producing four or five articles a day at THN.com slash San Jose, or just go to the hockey news and look at all of our wonderful team sites. We've got one for every team and more. We just put out our season predictions again, THN.com slash San Jose. Any click gives me some help. You know, I'm, I'm happy to provide all the news and notes you need. I'm active and Facebook. Give me a follow. It's just my name. All right. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. All right. Thanks to Max Miller from the Hockey News for coming on. Um, Love having Max on. I'm going to try to get him on here every once in a while to kind of talk about what's going on with the Sharks. Uh, Give us another view and another perspective about it. So make sure you guys are following along Max with, you know, his work over there at the Hockey News. Um, Yeah, I think we I think we both think the Sharks are going to be bad. Uh, I just think the Sharks going to be a little bit worse than the Max is this year. But that's okay. We're all aboard the Celebrity train. So, um, of course, thank you guys for uh, making Lockdown Sharks your first listen. Uh, You can follow the show wherever you get podcasts. And of course, you can subscribe on YouTube as well. Be back tomorrow with some bold predictions about the Sharks as uh, they actually get ready to kick off their season against the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, so make sure you guys are following along for that. Um, and then you can follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole until tomorrow. Bye friends.